Okay, so I think it's time to start. So good afternoon everyone and uh, good evening to the Professor Obak. So let's start uh, the last session of uh, today's activity. So in the last session, we have uh, three speakers. And uh, so the first one will be Professor Doran Obak from uh, the from from the bar in a university. Did I pronounce correctly? Bar Ilan University. Yes, Bar Ilan University. Okay, thanks. So Professor Obak is a professor of chemistry since the 1996 in the university. And uh, he found and listed the electrochemistry group at the university since the 1985. He's a JES, ISE, MRS fellow, and he chaired the BIU Department of Chemistry during 2001 to 2005, and Israel National Labs Accreditation Authority from 2010 and 2016. He found and has the Israel National Research Center for Electrochemical Propulsion, including the 28 research groups, several institutions, since the 2012. He also found, found, founded and leads the BIU Energy and the Sustainability Center, including 55 research groups since 2022. He has guided 40 postdoctoral fellows from a variety of countries and 70 PhD and 80 MSA students received the degree and his separation so far. And uh, all of the postdoctoral fellows and students, he is guided from the position in teaching and uh, research in academic institutions and the industries. That's very amazing. He also published uh, a large number of papers, around 750 peer-reviewed journal papers. And uh, he belongs to the group of uh, most societies, scientists in the world by WLS. And he also serves as an editor, senior editor, from the Journal of the Electrochemical Society in charge of the batteries and energy storage technical area. His group de develops new battery systems for electro mobility and large energy storage. Okay. He received a lot of uh, prestigious prizes, including the Israel Chemical Society gold medal and uh, a lot of others. Okay. I remember the Professor Obaka visited the campus of uh, Pony in 2018, and today we are very glad to have him to share his research activities online today. So without further ado, let's, let me pass the microphone to the Professor Obak. Yeah, Professor, yeah, you, can, you can start if you are ready. Thank you very much. I hope that you hear me well. So yes. thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much uh, for this uh, uh, long, too long introduction. <laughs> I have to say that uh, Hong Kong has a very warm corner in my heart. I like Hong Kong very much. I visited Hong Kong many times. I visited several universities in Hong Kong and I think Hong Kong is an amazing place to live. Uh, uh, very nice. This, this is an, an excellent example how uh, uh, you, you can elaborate a beautiful civilization in, an, in a very condensed uh, uh, area. And of course, I wish uh, the university, I wish Hong Kong uh, and you, my friends, all of the best. Yeah, so let's thank you. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, so the topic will be recharge with battery for electromobility, challenges of uh, high energy density and re reality. Uh, it will be an overview. I could enter uh, in depth, but I, I, I think I'll give you an overview of, of our of recent results. So it will be interesting. So um, uh, the agenda, a serial battery system for electric vehicles, manipulating uh, modified cathode materials and electrolyte solutions. And we'll talk about the renaissance of lithium metal energy for rechargeable high energy density batteries. There is a list of uh, group members. Um, uh, all our officers in my group. Uh, I should also uh, mention uh, participation of uh, people from Nichia company in Japan. Uh, Sunshuke Sawada just finished very successful MSC work on uh, lithium sulfur batteries. I should also mention collaboration with several important companies, Nichia in Japan, 
ATL in uh, China, uh, BSF in Germany, uh, General Motors and Quora in the US. And uh, also uh, I should mention Israel uh, 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 Research uh, uh, Center for Ecochemical Propulsion, INREP, uh, and also uh, uh, two in institutes in my university, Institute of Nanotechnology and Advanced Materials and the Energy and Sustainability Center of bar -Ilan University. So now let's run. We have four major uses of rechargeable electrochemical power sources. I believe that you are familiar. We have portable devices, portable electronics, and the lithium ion battery technology revolutionized the, I would say, the, uh, the, the, electronic, uh, the, the electronic revolution. Um, and we have a great success with lithium ion batteries. Uh, we are producing billions of lithium ion batteries and we distribute them throughout the world. Uh, and the level of uh, problem oxidants is less than part per billion. So we reach very high fidelity, and this is a great success of modern electrochemistry. And with this success, we move to the next challenge, which is electromobility. Um, electromobility, uh, we have electric vehicles, uh, where safety and uh, cycle life are very important, uh, not just energy density. And then we have also need, uh, needs for very high energy density for unmanned aviation, drones, and robotics where the energy density, uh, energy density is important on the account of, uh, of um, uh, safety and, 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 and cycle life. And there is a very, very close, the, the, the huge challenge of uh, large energy storage in order to uh, change the, 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 uh, our, our energy economy, global energy economy. Um, but this is not uh, the topic uh, now. In fact, Electrochemistry can really save the major issue. We, we, we all are hysterical and, uh, 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 about the climate issues and the climate crisis. And climate uh, crisis uh, is because we, um, we use fossil uh, fuels for uh, electricity production. Uh, we have to move to solar energy, but uh, for move, moving for solar energy, we, we need storage and electrochemistry can save the world. So things are in our hands. Uh, so, uh, going to electromobility, electromobility is not a, a, a new concept. Uh, more than a hundred years ago, the first cars were electrical. You have here a picture. Uh, now we have much better models, and we have to understand the limitation. We cannot change the car. The car, in, in, we, we should use usual cars with all the accessories. So, we have limited place, limited space, and, and way that we can fill with batteries. So we can pull something like half a ton batteries to the maximum, up to 250 liters. And with this, we need energy for a, a, a long a, a running. So uh, if we can put something like 80 kilowatt hour energy in the car, we can run uh, 500 kilometers between charges. Uh, the batteries are complex. We need the, the electronics. We need... We need uh, uh, a cooling system, we need a, uh, a, a, a sophisticated framework, but everything starts from the single cells where we, the electrochemists, are uh, influencing. So what is really important is what chemistry we can put. This is here is the determining step. Here, this is the, the barrier. And the question is what chemistry can be put here so we'll be able to, to um, with a uh, relatively reasonable amount of, uh, of um, uh, weight and, and volume, we'll be able to put uh, something like uh, 80, uh, uh, 80,000 uh, watt hours uh, that will allow us to drive uh, 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 long distances. So I will describe some, uh, some materials which are relevant. Uh, just to mention, um, uh, lithium ion batteries, this is a trivial uh, slide. We see here the basic uh, system. We have uh, um, graphite is the most the commonly used the anode, and we have a cathode which contain initially the lithium ions, and the process is lithium ions going back and forth from the negative and positive electrodes, uh, with a very small amount of electrolyte solution in between. Uh, what means that we can uh, we can have high uh, density uh, systems. We don't have to spend space on electrolyte solutions. All the all the active ions are 
within the electrode structure. The limiting factor is the cathode. Here you see in the right side, you see a, um, a chart, electrochemical chart of uh, voltage as a function of discharge capacity. And uh, there is a lot of information that this shall the, the uh, voltage profiles of uh, materials uh, under constant current operation, what we call galvanostatic operation, tells us, uh, tells us a lot. So we see plateaus, we see uh, uh, sloping um, um, curves, and uh, each the, the, the curves uh, provide a lot of structural information. For instance, if we have plateaus, it means that we have uh, first order, first transi phase transition, while if we have, um, if we have a um, sloping part, uh, the sloping uh, line uh, means we have a uh, formation of, uh, of a solid solution. And uh, there are major uh, structures that I can mention. We have layer structure, we have spinel structure, uh, where we can reach a uh, high voltage. Uh, with uh, this specific combination of nickel and manganese. We have olivine um, uh, structure, and uh, uh, these uh, structures uh, differ in the, uh, in the diffusion mechanism. In olivine, it's uh, in tunnels, it's, 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 it's uh, 1D, one, one, one dimension, and the, in the layer compounds, it's two dimensions, and in spinel, structure, three dimension uh, diffusion, which means that these materials are very fast, and I should mention this specific combination, the so-called lithium-rich NCM, uh, where we have two phases. We have an inactive phase, and here we can obtain a very high specific uh, capacities that uh, reach the nearly the limit that can be obtained by uh, a lithium transition metal oxide cathode. Uh, when uh, practically speaking, uh, the way how we pack the materials, so we have uh, uh, electrodes uh, and the uh, in-between separators soaked with electrolyte solution. Uh, we use usually copper, copper for the negative and aluminum for the positive. And there are three options of pack, uh, packing. We have one design. Uh, we have uh, parallel plates in, in, in pouches. And we have this uh, zigzag um, uh, Z-type electrodes. And the idea is that to, to Pack, to, to pack the, uh, the active mass um, uh, in a condensed manner, so uh, we, want, we will have a minimal uh, amount or, uh, or percentage of parasitic non-active uh, materials in the cell. When we talk about uh, energy density, uh, what we, I show you here is uh, in, the, in the right side, I mentioned several uh, batteries with lead acid, nickel, and then LTO, LTO um, and, uh, anode, high voltage anode versus uh, uh, three or four volt cathode. And then we have a di different type of cathode. The cathode, in fact, uh, determine the energy density by the specific capacity and the voltage. So the way how we start our calculation to start our attitude or uh, understanding we take the cathode, so here this is the, the, in the left side, I uh, mentioned several cathodes, and I mentioned energy, we start calculation by calculating the voltage times the capacity, and then we obtain um, a number in, uh, in uh, watt hour, it can be watt hour per kilogram, but then the question is, in what factor we have to divide this, uh, this initial number in order to, to take into account the negative electrodes, the electrolyte solution, the uh, the case and all the all the the, the current collectors etc. Uh, so uh, in, in good cases we we can start with with we multiply voltage times capacity and then the factor is something between two to three um, uh, and and of course um, we we want to minimize this the factor in which we have to divide the initial uh, uh, number of uh, voltage times capacity of the cathode material. So now let's go to the examples. Uh, the first example is nickel rich, uh, what you call nickel rich, nickel rich NCM. Here they were talking about uh, five elements, lithium, nickel, cobalt, manganese, oxygen, lithium uh, stoichiometry is one, all the transition metal uh, 12 stoichiometry is one, the oxygen the stoichiometry number is two, and 
as we increase the amount of nickel, we increase the possible uh, specific capacity of the material. So this is illustrated here in this cartoon. We go up on the road and you have here um, in, the, in the small placards, placards you have the, the, the numbers. And if we go, for instance, up to 100% nickel, the so-called LNO, then we can come up with, a, we can start with 250 milliampere hour per gram. What is nice about these materials that we are talking about relatively high specific capacity, but the voltage that we're talking about is relatively uh, uh, low. We can extract all the specific capacity uh, up to 4.3 volt, which is not too bad. This means that here we can have high specific capacity and in fact high energy density without endangering too much the anodic stability of our electrolyte solution. But what is the problem? As we go along, as we go high with nickel, we also go high with problems. We have phase transition, we have stress, especially a stress, especially when we go to the high volume, we are approaching a 4.3 volt, we have a, a, a phase transitions, we have stress, and stress means cracks, and if we have cracks which propagate to the surface, now solution uh, percolate to the particles and destroy the particles uh, because the active mass here is reactive uh, with the electrolyte solution. Remember, our electrolyte solution comprise alkyl carbonate solvents always uh, for lithium ion batteries, which are electrophilic. But all our cathode materials, I'm not talking about the negative, where the reactivity, reactivity is obvious, but also with the positive electrodes, uh, we have very reactive materials. When we have a linear transition metal oxides, they are very basic and nucleophilic. So we have a lot of options for side reactions uh, between the electrolyte solutions and the active mass the, beyond the option of uh, oxidation of the salt. But it appears that by doping, if we take uh, so, so this is this is a uh, uh, the shape here. Uh, we see the cracks, the crack, a crack particle uh, due, uh, after cycling, and this is a major problem that we uh, encounter here of this integration of the active mass. But by doping, we can change the picture. So if we put dopants like zirconium, titanium, tantalum, molybdenum. Uh, tungsten, then we have very complex by, by, by having dopants, we change both the surface and the bulk. Uh, we have segregation, uh, uh, there is more concentration of dopants on, on, on the surface, uh, discuss it in a minute, and then we can have more stable materials, what means that we can drive longer with uh, cathodes uh, uh, with uh, uh, lithium ion batteries based on these cathodes. So examples, I give you two examples of uh, doping. And I tell you, doping always is both surface and bulk, no matter how you start. So there is the top-down approach. This is simple. You can take a metallic precursor. You choose the element. Uh, here you, can, you see here in the right chart, you see uh, the results of uh, cycling. Uh, you see also uh, some uh, uh, cross-sectioning where we did element analysis and we demonstrate distribution of the, of the dopants in the, in, the, in the material. And we see that in certain cases, if we take the black and we look at capacity versus uh, cycle number in galvanostatic cycling, we see very clearly that uh, if the black here is the reference, we see that some dopants, like in this case, tantalum, uh, provide a, a, a quite stable behavior which is well uh, reflected by the, uh, by the structure through XRD, but I, I don't want to discuss the, this slide now. But here, I, the, the top-down approach is we take precursor, we put it on the surface. Now uh, we, we, we put it in solvent like ethanol, we dry the ethanol. Now we have a uh, um, layer of uh, precursor on the surface and we, 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 we apply a high temperature. The high temperature force diffusion of the meta metallic uh, dopant inside, and we have also segregation. Uh, so we have more concentration on the surface, and in such a way, uh, we, we have the, a, a, a doping of the material. Another option, of course, is uh, um, uh, a bottom up. We can put um, sources of, uh, of uh, dopants like niobium, tantalum, tungsten, aluminum, uh, with the precursor, and then the, the, the final pose, uh, process is always uh, heating up to more than 700 uh, degrees C. And then 
we have a distribution of dopants and also segregation, the surface is affected more. So what I show you here is uh, uh, the effect of several doping in full cells. So this is, uh, it's, uh, it, it's, still, it's not optimized, but it's, uh, it, it's, it's well, well reflective. Uh, so if, uh, if, uh, during five, uh, five hour cycles in full cells, this is the reference behavior with no dopant. This is 85% nickel, so the material is very sensitive. Uh, it's, it's, uh, we, we, we can, and, and what I show here is high rate, one C rate. So uh, in, in, in lower rate, we, we can reach uh, nearly 220 milliampere hour per gram. And uh, we demonstrate that in some case, for, for instance, uh, in this case, aluminum shows very good results. We see a nice stabilization. And this stabilization, once we see electrochemical stability, it is reflected by all the other channels that we use. For instance, we have a, a differential curve to take the, of, the, of the voltage profiles. So you see here the stability over cycling uh, in this chart when we have a good case uh, compared to a, a problematic case. Uh, when we use a DSC, differential, uh, differential uh, uh, scanning calorimetry, we see that whenever we have electrochemical stability, the interaction between the electrolyte solution and the active mass at elevated temperature is lower. We have less heat evolution and the onset temperature are higher. And most important, after cycling, we see that the dope material where we have stable behavior is well integrated. This is cross-sectioning. It's cutting by a focus ion beam, FIB, and then um, uh, observation by microscopy. And we can see that when we have uh, undoped material, when we have electrochemical instability, we have cracks after cycling, while uh, the integrity of the, the active mass, the particles is well maintained when we have the, um, uh, when we have the um, a, a, a doping. So we have very nice correlation uh, between all channels of stability and the electrochemical stability that we measure so this means that we understand what is the uh, mechanism of uh, stabilization, uh, but I want to go further with the, uh, with the um, screening here. Uh, with the, um, uh, and the next, the next story relates to very interesting material, which is the lithium and manganese rich. So if we have, a, uh, we have the same five elements, but now we change the stoichiometry. With lithium, we have more than one. With manganese, we have more, more, more than 0.5. And then the, re the rest is uh, distributed and oxygen is, is, is two. And then the rest is uh, distributed between cobalt and, 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 and nickel. Uh, so we have an ex excess of lithium and manganese. And whenever we, we do the synthesis, and remember the last synthesis is always high temperature calcination. So we have segregation of two phases. We have one phase is lithium MnO3, the MnO3 inactive at, uh, at low voltage with an active a, a, a classical layer compound, which has usually a rhomboedral uh, structure. And now the key issue here is the surface. Doping is not that important because anyway, we have segregation and dop the dopant will go to the, to the uh, uh, grain boundaries. Here we have to, uh, thanks to the structure, thanks to the formation of this phase, here what, what, what adds capacity is oxygen. We have oxygen redox, I believe that you, uh, this was dealt in this meeting before the wax and talks about, about uh, this type of materials. So when the oxygens become active, they are very reactive. And then the key issue is to isolate the active mass and the electrolyte uh, uh, solution. When we have oxygen redox uh, activity, we have also a, a oxygen evolution. We form very reactive peroxide, peroxo and superoxo species that react readily with the electrolyte solution. And thereby, the key issue is to form buffer zones. And now the question is, there are many, many ways you can put the uh, coding from the solution. We can use ALD, you can put thin films. Here, I showed something very recent. We use double gas treatment. We first of all use SO2 at elevated temperature and then ammonia at elevated temperature. And this uh, gas treatment, these gas treatments affect the surface. We have surface reactions and we have changes, chemical changes of the surface. We have sulfate and uh, networking on the surface. And we, uh, we form by the reactivity between the gases and the surface, we form buffer zone, we form uh, passivation, uh, chemical passivation. 
that uh, isolate and it's still SCI, it's solid electrolyte interface, it's allow lithium ion uh, transport, and we see a, a nice, uh, uh, nice uh, response. So here is, for instance, look at the discharge. These charts show uh, experiments in which we change the rates uh, throughout the experiments. Uh, this one, uh, the green reflect the, our favorite, which is the double gas. The blue and the red are only one gas treatment, and then the and the and the black is the reference untreated material. So we can see the capacity fading, which is pronounced and expected. There is also an issue of voltage fading, voltage hysteresis, which increases, and and the, uh, and also uh, the the average voltage uh, for discharge also uh, decays during cycles. You see here results over 400 cycles. And um, this is at very high rate. This is at, 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 three C, at the 3C rate, at 30 degree C. And we see that all the parameters, the hysteresis, capacity decay, voltage decay, everything improves thanks to the uh, surface treatment. And as I mentioned before, whenever we have such stabilization, all the other channels, whenever we, we study cathode materials, we use as many channels of information, as many analytical tools that we can. So here in this uh, slide, and I may ap apologize for the, for the busy, very busy slide that I'm, I'm showing, but I, 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 since I, this is a special niche event, a special op opportunity, I thought to uh, share with you as much information as possible and people who can read fat fast, can digest the information, which hopefully may be important. So here we have said the following channel, channels of information, four channels of information. We have, first of all, we measure online gas formation. We measure CO2 and oxygen uh, evolution. And we see for sure that uh, with, the, uh, with the treated materials, we uh, mitigate the gas evolution. We use differential scanning calorimetry. And here again, if you compare our favorite material, uh, the heat evolution is much lower compared to the reference and also to the other uh, samples that were treated only with one, with one uh, uh, gas. Um, the onset also is uh, uh, higher when we talk about our favorite. We measure the dissolution of transition metal. All our cathode material, whenever we have a cathode comprising uh, so a linear uh, transition metal oxide, we have a problem of uh, transition metal cation dissolution. They, they go to the negative and they destroy the passivation of the negative. And we have ter terrible cost of between the, 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 the negative and the positive electrode. So mitigation of uh, transition metal uh, cation dissolution is critically important. And we can see that, uh, so what we do, how we measure it, we simply after prolonged cycling, we take the negative, we extract, we, we extract the elements, and we can measure elements. In fact, we can do quite fully quantitative analysis of the elements that were moved, deposited on the, on the, on the negative electrodes. Um, and we demonstrate that with our favorite, we have minimal amount of uh, transition metal uh, um, um, uh, dissolution and, and, and deposition. And by uh, morphology, in, after post-mortem analysis, we always see uh, that the particles remain uh, uh, completed. They, re they retain their morphology. So this is, uh, is so uh, I would say that uh, here we may win with these materials. Remember, the specific capacity we can reach with these materials, something even up to 300 milliampere hour per gram, which is very nice. And we can uh, maintain stability. So this is a big, a big uh, um, option for us. The problem is that in order to really extract the high specific capacity, we have to go to high voltage, which is uh, maybe a problem. Um, but uh, this also can be handled by use of ele appropriate electrolyte solutions, as we'll discuss later. The next uh, issue relates to high voltage uh, lithium uh, uh, nickel um, uh, manganese. Uh, uh, oxide spinel. And here uh, we use uh, tungs tungsten selenide. People will say tungsten selenide, this, uh, this is an exotic material. It's not uh, practical to use such an exotic material, but this is just a model system. And we have many, many layered compounds now, which are cheap and, and relevant. 
uh, and, and, and papers, papers are in preparation. But the idea is that here we, we, we show a, a, an important co a, a concept. We use layered material that can absorb to the surface. And we did experiments with uh, nickel rich material, 85%, and also with this lithium nickel mangan of phenyl. And we have adsorption of this tungsten selenide on the surface of the cathode. So we form buffer zone, and I'll tell you in a minute why it goes for. And also, we have also effect on the, on the, on the, pole, on the negative elect electrodes. While we start with covering the cathodes, we have migration of the material to the positive, uh, to the negative electrode, and we have mitigation of the reactivity of lithium anodes as well. And the results are impressive. So you, you see results in 13 degrees C and, and 55 degrees C. Uh, LM LMNO is, is, uh, not, is known to be very uh, problematic in elevated temperature. We could demonstrate a, a, a stabilization look compared between the black reference and the green covered materials. We see stabilization, which is impressive. Uh, we, we stabilize the, vo the, the, the capacity. We also stabilize the voltage. We stabilize the uh, uh, resistance. Yeah, you see some voltage profiles as well. And this is also the stabilization maintained, is, is being maintained also at elevated temperature. And uh, so here you have another uh, comparison at relatively high rates um, at 55 degrees C. Look at the green histograms compared to the black histogram. Uh, so the stabilization is impressive. And this is because we form a buffer zone. This buffer zone, first of all, mitigate any possible side reactions between the negative, the positive and the electrolyte solution. Also, it mitigates the solution of transition metals, which is detrimental to both the positive and the negative electrodes. And, and, and there is that stabilization. I would say again, I, I could talk more about mechanism and, and, and go, go in depth, but each, each slide like this may, may be a, a starting point for a whole a talk about a, a, a single system. So I prefer to go further and show more examples um, and share with you more examples. Uh, the, the, the work is being published in these days. So we, we talk about mechanisms. And in fact, fortunately, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to say that things are clear. We understand what's going on. And thanks to that, we can use now much cheaper materials uh, than the layer, the tungsten selenide. We have very cheap, very elegant materials that we can use as that, that absorb to the surface and form uh, very effective buffer zones that protect the, the positive electrode. The last example in uh, talking about talking about um, um, talking about uh, 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 modified cathode materials is uh, uh, lithium cobalt oxide. Lithium cobalt oxide, in fact, is very commonly used. Uh, all uh, your laptops and 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 and, um, and, and um, solar phones are operated by graphite LCO cells, <clears throat> uh, and they usually the operation is up to 4.2, 4.3 volt, which means that we extract the capacity which is 150 milliampere hour per gram. But there is an option to increase the voltage up to 4.6, even more, and then come up to very high specific capacity above 200 milliampere hour per gram. In fact, we can go up to 120 milliampere hour per gram. And here with such systems, if we combine lithium metals and we and, and LCO going up to 4.6, and uh, if we can stabilize both the negative and the positive, we may reach the highest specific energy that can be reached by this type of batteries. Uh, up, um, even more than 400 uh, one hour per kilogram. And here we develop two, two um, synergistic treatments. First of all, we have coating. We develop coating which comprises aluminates. Aluminates, it's fluoro aluminates with a, a active metal. It can be lithium, it can be a, a magnesium, rubidium, that still allow a lithium ion transport. And also, we use a, a, a magic electrolyte solution that we'll discuss uh, in, in a few minutes. And so we use the fluorinated co-solvents. Using fluorinated co-solvents compared to conventional, we can increase the specific capacity because the fluorinated solvents affect both the negative and the positive. So we have coding on the positive, uh, and we have also the effect of fluorinated co-solvent, which affect the surface by unique surface chemistry that we'll discuss. And in such a way, if 
if you compare uh, the, uh, the, 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 the orange curves here and here and here, we can see how we can stabilize um, the materials at a high specific uh, capacity uh, during uh, hundreds of cycles. And there is also very positive effect of the, of the, neg of the negative of the, on the lithium side. And this is well reflected by post-mortem analysis that show that with our favorite electrolyte solutions comprising fluorinated solvents, we have smooth lithium surfaces after prolonged cycling. Now, there is of course the question of uh, uh, voltage. So there are, uh, here I show options for uh, polarization from uh, above the conventional one, going up to even 4.7. We came into conclusion that for LCO, 4.6 is optimal. Uh, because with 4.6, we can extract very high specific capacity starting with 220 at least, and the, it can be well stabilized. And here I can show you stabilization by uh, uh, a, a coating, which includes rubidium, uh, but, but, we, but it appears that rubidium provides a, a, a very good result, but now we have other, other uh, methods, which are much cheaper, and also do a very good job. And we can see a nice stabilization over uh, hundreds of, uh, of uh, cycles uh, with uh, coding and using our favorite electrolyte solution. And here, we, we, after concluding good coating and good uh, combination of, uh, of electrolyte solution, we did prolonged experiments with quite reasonable loading. And we demonstrated we can run 100,000 cycles uh, with, a, with this uh, po protected cathode, with the, our favorite electrolyte solution. The post-mortem analysis show that after hundreds of thousands of cycles, no cracking. This is a, a, a untreated material, which show cracks. Uh, our material is smooth. This is cross-section uh, that show that the, we, we maintain the integration of the, of the particles. And uh, after thousand cycles, we saw some capacity fading. We simply replaced the, 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 ne the negative electrode continuing with the cathode, and we could uh, come up with more, uh, a thousand cycles more. So this demonstrates stabilization of both negative and positive. So now these experiments related to lithium um, uh, me me metals, and let's now go indeed to the lithium metal side. And we need uh, lithium metal anodes. We want, to, uh, we want to see a renaissance of lithium uh, metal based uh, uh, rechargeable batteries. In fact, I worked uh, uh, decades ago. I developed um, a, a rechargeable, commercial rechargeable battery with lithium metal anode, and I gave up because it appears that with lithium metal, you have in, in conventional electrolyte solutions, uh, uh, even if you don't have dendrite formation, uh, the passivation is not hermetic. All the electrolyte solutions are being consumed, and the cell become dry after uh, several hundreds of cycles. But uh, we need lithium ion batteries for uh, uh, very high energy density batteries, uh, for especially for unmanned aviation like drones, like these guys. We want to, 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 put, to leave them as long as, uh, as possible uh, in, in, in air, and for that we need high energy density. So uh, when we think about uh, advantages and problems uh, of, of lithium metal anodes, it's clear the advantage is high energy density, which is obvious. The problem are dendrites, reactivity, uh, and so uh, stabilization of uh, lithium metal anodes in rechargeable batteries is a big challenge and important challenge. And there are many options. The people uh, describe modification of lithium surface, increase of the effective lithium electrode surface, uh, use solid electrolytes, uh, addition of, of selected cations like cesium and rubidium. Uh, that, that could change the, the surface uh, situation. We found that a, a simplest way is modification through the electrode, the use of electrolyte solution. And when we use fluorinated solvents, we have two guys together, monofluorinated EC and defluorinated EC. These are very important because the fact that we have a substitution by fluorine we can have on the surface, on the active surfaces, the active surfaces are talking about both lithium and the, all, the, all our cathode materials. They are basic and nucleophilic. So we may have elimination of HF, and then we form double bond on the, on the surface. So we have many options for polymerization. 
And now we can come with the ideal SCI and just give you experimental results. And then I'll uh, describe what, what is going on, how we obtain the, uh, the ideal SCI on lithium metals by this, by the combination of these two uh, uh, custodians. So when we do uh, very, we do simple tests, we took, we took uh, symmetric lithium cells, uh, we, uh, we apply very high uh, loading, two million per hour per square centimeter, 3.3 million per hour, million per hour per square centimeter, which is nice, very practical. And we simply measure the voltage profiles during prolonged cycling. And the voltage profile tells us very, very easily if we have stable system or not. So we see that with FEC, uh, FEC as a, as a co-solvent, we have stable cycling, thousands of cycles. And with conventional electrolyte solution based on, uh, 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 on, on, on ethylene carbonate, we have, we see very, from the beginning, we see these uh, changes. In, we see the, the, the this is, uh, 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 no, and not have, so this, this reflects a, a very, very uh, problematic voltage profiles. Now, this continuous curves is simply many, many voltage profiles uh, like that, uh, simply while uh, demonstrating uh, experiments uh, over many, many, many cycles. So now we can take uh, nickel rich uh, NCM cathode. You have 6 to 2, 60% nickel, 80% nickel, and even 100% nickel. Nickel, and we see stabilization of full cells. Uh, here we start with the nearly uh, 240 million power per gram with LNO, and we demonstrate stabilization over hundreds of cycles. Now there's a question, why with symmetrical cells, when we have the reactive lithium, we have thousands of cycles, and we add cathode, uh, the number of cycles which are relevant is lower. The answer, uh, is that we have cost of between the electrodes and we demonstrate it. But let me just concentrate on LNO. LNO is very important because LNO is the lead compound with which you can reach the highest specific capacity. You can go even beyond 250 milliampere hour per gram without going beyond 4.3 volts. So the fact that you can extract 250 milliampere hour per gram going no more than 4.3 volt in a cell, this means that you can keep your electrolyte solution stable. Remember, our previous option of the lithium and manganese rich, where we can, could also come up with high specific capacity, but then going to high voltage was mandatory, where to go even up to 4.8 volt. But here we can manage with 4.3 volt, and this means that we are in a good shape. Now, after prolonged cycling, I'm talking about hundreds of cycles, and uh, we also uh, tried very small amount of electrolyte solution to make sure that we don't have a, cons a, a pronounced consumption of electrolyte solution. And compared to uh, the, the reference uh, EC-based electrolyte solution, we see with LNO, uh, there is a capacity decay. The cells are not optimized, they are, they are coin cells, but we could demonstrate hundreds of cycles. And after prolonged cycling, no change in the negative positive electrode, no cracks, nothing. The positive electrode remain fully, uh, uh, fully um, uh, um, completed and, and, and uh, unaffected. The problem is the is the is the lithium side, uh, and and the, the problem comes through core stock. And here I, I here in this chart, I uh, demonstrate the effect of core stock. So in our cells, we have electrolyte solution which contain lithium hexafluorophosphate, we have phosphorus from the electrolyte, and we have phosphorus from the fluorinated solvent. So we have initial ratio, which depend on the amount of a, a fluorinated co-solvent in the electrolyte solution. So the initial ratio in our case, 20% uh, uh, FEC in the uh, amount in, in the solvent is uh, one to 2.74. When we cycle symmetrical lithium cells, after thousand, more than 1,000 cycles, the ratio now is changing. It's 1 to 3.12, which means there was some consumption of the FEC, the FEC and thereby the amount, the, 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 the uh, relative amount of fluoride from the electrolyte was higher. But when we come to the cells, even after 40 cycles with the, any NCM uh, cathode, we see big change 
in the in the ratio, which means that we have consumption of FSP. And this consumption is because of cost of gas oxidation on the on the on the positive. We have then a uh, migration of oxidized products to the positive negative electrodes, and we have bad interference of the uh, uh, of the species coming from the cathodes, oxidized species on the passivation, and this is a key issue. And we, you, can, you can add to it also uh, dissolution of transition uh, 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 metal ketal. So, uh, uh, sorry to interrupt. We may need to finish in several minutes. Yes, yes, yes. I, this is uh, my uh, only, 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 only uh, really few slides. I'm, I'm concluding. Okay, uh, okay, thanks. So I'm concluding. So, uh, what is the situation, uh, the actual situation? Uh, we have SCI, but it's not flexible. It cannot accommodate neither the position nor the, the, the solution. So when we have, uh, um, uh, when we have, uh, so this is the uh, lithium dissolution. So uh, by, by the, the mistake here, but upon the position of the solution, we have uh, the, the surface thing cannot accommodate the change, the morphological changes of lithium. So we have break and repair mechanism and we have side reactions, reaction between the electrolyte solution and the active metal. In our case, thanks to unique surface chemistry, we can obtain we can obtain flexible surface films because uh, we we obtain polymeric species together with ionic li li lithium compounds. So we have ideal combination of species which are flexible. They form flexible matrices that can accommodate the morphological changes, yet behave like SCI solid electro interface. And this is thanks to a uh, unique surface films. I just want to emphasize in this slide where I where I demonstrate uh, that if, when we have both FEC and DFEC, we can extend cycle life because here they work synergistically. DFEC reacts first to form the surface films and then FEC is a healer. And whenever there's any cracks of the FEC, which is uh, uh, remaining uh, in, act, in, 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 in touch in solution can help to heal uh, whenever we have any, any cracks or, or, or uh, the discontinuity of the SCI. So we have the, the following mechanism. We have, uh, first of all, formation of uh, surface films thanks to uh, the reaction with DFEC, which is the more reactive. And then we have FEC in solution that whenever we have cracks, uh, we have uh, FEC which react and heal the crack. And in such a way, we can demonstrate uh, a, a prolonged cycle life of a, a, a lithium uh, uh, of, of lithium um, anodes. So this is the, the surface chemistry, uh, thanks to the unique uh, structure and the possible to have uh, uh, reactions on the surface, uh, the hydrofluorination, formation of double bonds, polymerization, and formation of uh, ionic lithium compounds, we can come up with the uh, unique, uh, unique um, uh, surface chemistry. Well, I can skip the sulfur part and I go um, uh, 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 more. So I skip the sulfur part. I would say that with sulfur uh, 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 systems, by using a very simple additive, lithium sulfide, which anyway, anyway is, is being formed in the systems, but we use it a priori. We, from the beginning, we have lithium sulfide, then, and the electrolyte solution called is dioxide and DME, lithium TFSI and lithium nitrate. We have unique surface chemistry that avoid the famous sh shuttle uh, effect simply because lithium nitrate oxidizes the, sulf the sulfide and, and, and form on the surface networks of lithium sulfur oxygen that enhance very pronouncedly the passivation of lithium. So we don't have the famous shuttle effect and we demonstrate very nice stabilization of lithium. These are uh, results from symmetrical cells. Uh, we it, it, all, it was all published, so it's all, it's all built to, to follow us with the publications, but uh, it appears that here we have another very simple magic additive, just it has to be a priori in the electrolyte solution, so it will be affected by the lithium nitrate. And then we understand all the complex surface chemistry that can be, can, uh, can be developed here. All the components are reactive on the lithium surface, but they, 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 they work synergistically to, to, demo, to provide good passivation and uh, by we can demonstrate a monolithic sulfur uh, uh, cathode impregnating sulfur inside the uh, porous uh, uh, carbon cloth and demonstrate stabilization of full cells. And this is a chance to reach a high specific energy density 
with little circles. So now I go to, to I'll, I'll conclude. First of all, I want to warn the community from, they, they, we have to remember with all this nice uh, 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 achievement with high energy density, the most important issue is safety, especially when we go to electromobility. So we, we, the, the, the issue of safety and durability is more important than energy density. Another problem is the people, uh, the, the problem is fast charging, which is fast. There's no, whenever you have fast charging means high uh, uh, power density, how power density all go, goes always on the account of energy density. And or whenever we use really fast charging, it goes on the account of specific capacity and stability. Uh, people promise and promise, and this is a, a, bad, a bad culture. And more, more problematic is use of two exotic uh, materials uh, where we have, uh, uh, where, where we have uh, accidents. And these accidents, or the, the potential of accidents, is well reflected by very simple uh, differential scanning calorimetry that uh, measure interactions between the cathodes and the, and the, and the electrolyte solution. And it appears that lithium iron phosphate is the winner. Lithium iron phosphate is the negative electrode, uh, is a positive electrode where we have the higher do the highest durability and the highest safety. And now, concluding, uh, we have uh, we see a very nice development of uh, the lithium ion uh, battery technology and lithium metal battery technology. We have third, uh, second generation, third generation, now solid electrolyte batteries. In fact, fuel cells are also very good competitors. And uh, uh, at the end of the day, we'll see fuel cells and batteries propelling together uh, uh, ground trans transportation and also aviation. We have lithium sulfur. There is a question about endu endurance, safety, cycle life, durability. Lithium oxygen met and uh, sodium oxygen, very problematic. Uh, I, I worked a lot on them and my, I'm, I'm very skeptical. So there is a lot of noise from startup companies which form is too much. And we have the scientific community has to be responsible and change the culture here. Uh, we can still gain a lot of uh, support by telling the truth. Uh, we have to be careful with promising about fast charging, too dangerous, uh, unsupported. High powers goes always on the account of high energy. Uh, safety and cycle life more important than energy density. Uh, it appears that 3.2 volt graphite LFP are suitable for everything. And in fact, you can put, simply by putting more batteries in the car, you can ensure very prolonged uh, 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 driving. And also, fortunately, LFP is also relatively fast. It's relatively fast because you can make it nano because of the relatively less reactivity of the oxygens of the, of the phosphate with the electrolyte solution compared to transition metal oxide. So this is in fact a case, lithium iron phosphate, a case for a nano structure may be profitable, may be uh, uh, useful. So here, my suggestion, we can think about less energy density, more batteries in the car, but then base safety and durability. And uh, in fact, combination of fuel cells and lithium ion batteries are going to win the whole issue of propulsion, of, of, of uh, ground transportation, and, and all, all issue of, 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 of propulsion. And with this, um, uh, I want to thank you very much for uh, listening to me. Uh, it was my pleasure to share with you our recent results. And I think that we are in good shape. I think that our community serves the, 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 serves the, the human, uh, the, the human uh, population. And I think that uh, if we think about climate challenges, the solutions are in our hands. I'm very optimistic that our community can win and can provide also very, very good solutions for electromobility and also for large energy storage. And with this, really, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm done. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you for the wonderful talk. And unfortunately, we do not have time for the questions. And uh, we hope we can have a face-to-face -face discussion in Hong Kong with Professor Obak after the international travel is resumed.